Hello. In this episode we will describe in a general way what is called the T-Con board in a TV set and its role in controlling the display on an LCD screen. T-Con it is an acronym of an English word. The T stands for timing. And the word con stands for control. It is a set of circuits grouped together in an electronic board. So to make it short, instead of saying timing control, we use the shortcut T-Con. The T-Con board is used as an interface between the motherboard of the television and the screen. The latter is usually of the LCD type, which is an abbreviation of liquid crystal display. The screen is sometimes called panel. The appearance of each pixel of the image on the screen is controlled by the T-Con board. Thus, it determines to which pixel of the screen must be sent such point of the image to be diffused, and at which moment. This process is known as the pixel addressing. In the television set, we can meet three types of T-Con board. A first category with a board separated from the screen. It is connected to the screen via another board. The second category is made of a board in the form of a rectangular rule connected to the screen by one or more connections made of a plastic material on which is engraved conductive tracks and integrated circuits. This part is known as the COF. It is the acronym of chip on film. Which means electronic chip engraved on film. In the last category, there is no identifiable T-Con board. All the circuits of the T-Con are integrated in another board, as in this example of a board known as 3-in-1. On this single board we find, the main power supply, the motherboard and the T-Con board. Unlike the power supply board or motherboard, when a television has a separate T-Con board, it is usually not directly visible. The board is usually under a metal panel. This metal part has a double role. On the one hand, it serves as a heat sink shield that is responsible for reducing heat buildup on the T-Con. On the other hand, it acts as a barrier to prevent high-frequency noise from leaving the T-Con and to prevent the penetration of radiation from external sources. Another feature to know is the presence under the shield of a material that is attached to some electronic components of the board. This is a thermal pad whose role is to transfer heat from a component of the board to the shield. When removing the shield, this material must be located. It is important when putting the shield back in place to make it coincide with the right component to ensure heat dissipation towards the shield. Note that when changing a board and if it is delivered without the thermal pad, you can recover them from the old board to put them on the new one. It is also important to put the screws in the right place so that the ground of the T-Con board is connected to the chassis of the TV. Here we see on this simplified block diagram of a neon tube LCD TV, the position of the T-Con board in relation to the various components of the TV. The T-Con board is connected to the motherboard by a special cable called LVDS. This term is the acronym for Low Voltage Differential Signaling. The details of its operation will be seen later. This cable carries the video signal in its power supply to the T-Con board. The T-Con board is connected to the motherboard by one or more connectors. At the output of this board to the screen, we can find one or more connectors. Some boards have a logo. This makes it possible to identify the manufacturer as in this example, where the acronym that we see here is that of Samsung. In a typical T-Con board there are several circuits. The T-Con board receives a single voltage for its operation. From this voltage, it will produce several other voltages thanks to a mini power supply. This is based on a DC-DC converter. Various voltages are needed to operate the LCD. The power supply is recognizable thanks to the presence of coils. Among the other circuits of the T-Con board, there are logic circuits represented by the microprocessor, one or more RAM memories and sometimes an EEPROM memory. There is also an electronic chip with a very particular function. It is the gamma chip, it has an important role in the display of the image. To operate, the T-Con board needs a power supply. Most T-Con boards work with 12 volts. Some work with 5 volts. The passage of this voltage from the main power supply to the T-Con goes through the motherboard. This voltage is controlled by the microprocessor on the motherboard which transmits it to the T-Con by controlling a transistor or a MOSFET. After powering up the T-Con, all the voltages of the mini power supply will not be produced instantly. The different voltages will be produced only after the microprocessor of the T-Con has sent a startup command to the power supply. The startup signal is sent in the form of a voltage. This signal is called on, or power on, or enable. 
The microprocessor receives its power supply voltage either from a voltage regulator or from the DC-DC converter, and this is the only voltage that the mini power supply provides while waiting for the microprocessor on, to output the rest of the voltages. In the following example, the power on signal coming from the microprocessor is written on the card under the label POW, on which is the abbreviation of power on. To check if this voltage comes out of the microprocessor, it is necessary to measure it with a multimeter put in DC mode, at the test point just mentioned. Various voltages produced by the TCON are necessary to operate the LCD screen. The latter contains MOSFET transistors. Two voltages generated by the TCON allow the control of the gate of the MOSFET. A voltage of positive value called VGH allows the activation of the MOSFET. The VGL is a negative value voltage. It allows to put the MOSFET in off mode. The VGH is the acronym of voltage gate high and the VGL is the acronym of voltage gate low. More details will be given later about the different voltages of the TCON board. Before that, a detailed analysis of the LCD screen will be presented in a future episode, goodbye and see you soon.